Nobody wants to get united. Like, what we gotta do is meet everybody in home 49th Street at the bench. There is something in graffiti that a lot of new graffiti artists do that should never be done <laughs> under any circumstances. And that's what we're gonna be talking about in today's video as we rate your guys' tags on a scale from 1 to 10. Oh, this is classic. Alright, so I got a rule here on the channel. If you're doing stuff out in the streets, I try to be a little bit more lenient with you because obviously there's a lot of factors to doing stuff in the streets, right? You want to catch a tag on this spot? All well and good. I'm not gonna harp on the dude for not being able to fit everything so cleanly on this surface. Is that something he should have thought about? Sure, yes. However, comma, we all know how it is. So overall, not a bad tag at all whatsoever. Sure, the K gets a little bit crunched in because of, you know, running out of room here. But what I would say is why not just do the tag, you know, going down, right? I mean, you're already practically doing that. <laughs> just just do it going down and you would have been fine. It's <laughs> such a simple fix. That, that, that's all it would have taken. But otherwise, a really good hairstyle. Not bad at all. The guy's got good work. So I'm going to give this a good 8 out of 10. I think that's pretty fair. Here we got a hairstyle from Temp. And overall, it's not too bad. Pretty simplistic, pretty straightforward. Nothing really fancy going on here. And they executed it overall pretty well. However, we can see a little bit of sloppiness with some of the fundamentals. Things like line work and even letter name positioning, which then distorts letter structure ever so slightly, are things that stand out. For example, the M being a little bit too close to the E, and as a result, the M goes ahead and closes the otherwise open counter of the capital E at the top, which could potentially make it look like a lowercase e. Now, we could tell it's a capital E because there is a tiny, tiny gap there, but had that M been even closer ever so slightly, then we wouldn't be able to tell. Otherwise, this is pretty good. We'll give this a 3 or a 4 out of 10. Here we have a mech throwy, and I'm always cautious when I come across a new graffiti artists on digital. The reason for this is because digital could potentially do a lot of the work for you. Now, if you're a professional using digital, no problem, because you already have those skills baked into you. But if you're an amateur or you're intermediate and you're using digital, chances are your work is better digitally than it is traditionally. And I think that's what's happening with Mech's throwy right here. Now, the throwy itself isn't inherently bad, right? Yeah, sure, you have a lot of negative space here at the top, but the letters are still there. The letters are still fundamentally correct otherwise. However, if we look carefully, we can see very slight messiness in the shapes. And this is something that, once again, is being compensated for by digital medium. Because when we look at his more traditional work, suddenly those messy shapes become a lot more prevalent. So here's my warning, right? For anybody who's newer to graffiti, be careful when using digital mediums. Try not to use too, too many of the crutches that digital provides. Or just put digital aside when it comes to your practice and practice in the books. In order to actually get that muscle memory and practice down for having refined, clean shapes baked in into your actual skill set rather than having and needing the crutches that digital provides. And we're gonna give this a good 5 out of 10. I think that's pretty fair. Oh, Seymour, now that's a nice hand style. I like it. It's nice, clean, and effective. And you can tell with the lines of the actual tag itself that it's a pretty well practiced hand style. This is somebody with some experience. And this shows us right here. This is a clear and perfect example of how once you get those fundamentals down pat, even the most simple of tags like this right here still look well done and stylish. They still have that that essence of being refined to them. So for that reason, I gotta give this a good 8 or a 9 out of 10. This hairstyle tripped me out for a solid 10 seconds. I couldn't tell, like, how this was done. I didn't realize this was a mirror at first. <laughs> and I was like, how? How does he have a marker that big? But this isn't bad at all. I would say give your E and your S a little bit more room between one another because things get a little bit messy right here in the center area. But other than that, not a bad hairstyle at all. We'll give that a good 6, 7 out of 10. Structure-dependent letters and details in graffiti are are not really the best option. It's something that we usually see newer graffiti artists try to attempt. And in all admission, when an experienced graffiti artist does it, it can turn out really well. However, there's a lot of drawbacks and usually the benefits don't really do a good job of compensating for those drawbacks. So right here we have a dace tag where this little swirl of the bottom of the D comes over right into the crossbar of the A. The issue with stuff like this is you diminish the A's structure because it doesn't have its own crossbar. You're more so suggesting the structure using the D to do it. The issue with this is now if the trajectory of your swirl here changes at all in your future tags, well then so does the crossbar. Now suddenly the crossbar becomes hyper dependent on whether or not you're able to do a nice clean shape. And since an amateur is an amateur for a reason, they typically are not the most consistent when it comes down to doing anything, let alone drawing clean shapes. So suddenly you've tethered your tags, letter structure, the most important fundamental, to something that is really arbitrary, like this swirl. Keep in mind, you don't have anything else like this in your tag. Sure, you could say that the S is 
also much more rounded, but this is a basic print font tag otherwise, and as a result, all basic structure letters flow automatically, so you wouldn't have had to have done this rule to begin with. Not to mention the fact the bowl of the D is curvy enough to flow with the S. And you have a sharp top to your S, which already flows with the D, the A, and the E. So you don't really need that swirl at all whatsoever. So we'd give this a 2 or 1.5 out of 10. Ooh, look at this. Now this is a nice tag here. Now what I really like about this is despite the letters, despite the style, he's got a pretty clean, crisp baseline going across the bottom of this. And that right there, for something this stylistic, that right there screams experience. Tell me, I mean, like, let's be honest. How many toys have you seen try something stylistic and their baseline is all out of whack? It's common. That really happens. So when you see something like this, this well executed, it's nice. It's clean. I gotta give that a good 8. Who is texting me right now? I gotta give it a good 8 out of 10. He's got videos too? Okay, let me see this. Uh, e, S. Okay, alright, I see you. E, R, alright, I got you. M, B, A. Nice. You know what? That's, that's some... Look at that music. Hold up. Hold up. Oh, no, the profanity. <laughs> not a bad wall, though, dude. Not bad at all. I love it, man. I love it. I mean, not my not my favorite kind of music, but a pretty sick wall. We got to give it a good 8 out of 10. Now, that brings us to the end of today's video. If you guys want to learn more about hand styles, check out the best how to do graffiti playlist right here. It's got a bunch of information about how to practice your basic tags. And we got more graffiti content right down here. And of course, as always, we have the books that we published in the description down below for you if you want to help jumpstart your graffiti. Now, with all that said, I want to thank you guys for watching. I'll catch you guys back here next week.